Good afternoon. I'm Father David. Thank you for joining me today for Disciple Time as we are focusing on the memorial of St. Benedict. And in honor of that memorial, I am wearing my St. Benedict medal today. Now, St. Benedict, the abbot, is someone who most people consider to be the father of monasticism. Now, this is because St. Benedict, um, before St. Benedict, to be a monk, you had to kind of go out into the desert, into some remote place, and be a hermit to be free from the world and to spend one's time in quiet contemplation. So St. Benedict lived in 480 to about 550, and he is the patron saint of both Europe and the patron saint of monks. And that's for good reason, because St. Benedict ushered in a new monastic era in Europe with his Benedictine rule of faith. And I have that here, the rule of St. Benedict. And I have read this all the way through. And, uh, and what I really love about it is it's very practical and very spiritual for the monks cloistered together, living out this rule. And it's very balanced, so it has kind of everything in moderation for the monks. So there's time for prayer, there's times for silence, there's times for work, there's times for leisure and rest. And one of the interesting things is when I went out to Mount Angel Abbey, which is the Benedictine monastery here in Oregon, I found that the monks out there even brew their own beer. And my favorite one here, the second one from the left, is the Dark Knight. That's kind of my favorite beer out there. And and I thought, you know, look at those labels. Those are just great, right? And the monks are doing all this out there at the monastery while they're praying the daily office and everything else. And what I like about today's responsorial psalm, Psalm 17, is... We're kind of focusing on beholding the face of God, which is a very monastic kind of idea. And so we see that responsorial after each stanza that we read is this, In justice I shall behold your face, O Lord. And what I particularly like about this psalm is it's not just the focus on justice, but like I said, it's the monastic feel that it has. Listen to some of the things the psalmist is saying here. Your eyes behold what is right, though you test my heart, searching it in the night, though you try me with fire. And this really highlights the contemplative nature of the monastic life, if you think about it, the idea of just 24 hours a day kind of focusing on the presence of God and and being with God in the moment. And the psalmist goes on to say, hide me in the shadow of your wings. And then he says, let me see your face when I awake. Let me be filled with your presence. Now, this is a big reason people engage in the monastic life to begin with. And that's to draw closer to God and become more fully aware of God's ongoing presence in their life moment to moment. And so, as I was thinking about this being the Memorial of St. Benedict and kind of the monastic way of life, I thought, you know what, this is a great time (laughs) to give the Order of St. Luke a shameless plug. So the Order of St. Luke is the monastic religious order that I belong to, but where it differs from, say, the Benedictine order is rather than living and working in a monastery, to draw closer to God and seek God's presence in that kind of secluded setting. In the Lucan order, we live within the community. We keep our day jobs as we seek to draw closer to God and become more aware of his moment-to-moment presence right here in the community. And so we gather in places within the community to do our praying of the daily office. Right now, we're doing that at Holy Communion Church on Monday nights at 6.30. So if you'd like to come out and kind of see what monastic praying of the daily office and the chanting that goes along with that looks like, come on out and join us. And eventually, our group is going to be going out to different places within the community, kind of evangelistically, 
to pray the daily office where there's people that can't get out maybe to see that. Places like Touchmark, different nursing homes and stuff like that. We think this is going to be a real spiritual blessing and work of mercy for people. So, you know, here's the thing. The, the Order of St. Luke, if you're kind of wondering about whether or not this is something for you to check out, I want you to know that it's open to all denominations. So whether you're Lutheran, whether you're Catholic, whether you're um, Methodist or even Baptist or non-denominational, it doesn't matter. All are welcome. You come together. It doesn't matter what your vocation is. It doesn't matter if you're uh, celibate or married. Everyone is invited to join in the praying of the daily office and living out this Lucan rule of life and service, which we take on in this religious order. And Everybody can move all the way through to become fully vowed members of the order. So there's nothing that's going to hold you back, um, nothing that you're going to have to um, think about leaving, because this happens within the context of whatever vocation you also have in the world, which is one of the things we really love about it. And as I was thinking about this kind of keeping yourself one foot in the world and one foot kind of, you know, thinking about the things of God, I really loved what we see in the gospel reading for today because this is what Jesus is doing. He is engaging the communities and the towns with labors of love. And look what we see in Matthew 9, 35 through 38. It says this, Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. And I thought about this, and I was asking myself, what is the application for this in light of the memorial of St. Benedict? I think it's this, Lord, help me to be a laborer for your love and kingdom within my community. And maybe for you, that is kind of joining in some kind of monastic religious order and seeing how God would use you through that? Maybe it's not. There's lots of different avenues that you can use to be a laborer for the kingdom and the community. Sometimes it's just as simple as praying for those that are out laboring or praying for the sick, visiting the sick. We have so many ministries that you can be a part of here at Holy Communion Church. Well, Thank you for joining me today as we're focusing on the Memorial of St. Benedict. I'm Father David. Have a blessed day.